unpleasant conditions prevailing at Adelaide Oval are of little consequence to the more than 52,000 enthusiasts awaiting the start of the South Australian National Football League's Grand Final. Tension in the dressing rooms is reflected by Port Adelaide's full forward and international cricketer Eric Freeman as the Magpies prepare for their clash with North Adelaide by whom they were defeated in the second semi-final. Port's victory over Central Districts in the preliminary final qualified them for today's big one. In North's dressing room, there's an atmosphere of quiet confidence. They came from behind to score seven goals in the last quarter of the semi to beat Port and have not played for a fortnight and are probably the fresher combination. Four times during the season, the teams have clashed for two wins each. North's headed the league premiership table, two points ahead of Port, and now all is in readiness for the match that will determine the winner of the flag. John Cale leads Port. Their most senior player, he's been their best and fairest on three occasions and was an All-Australian selection in 1969. The Roosters are led by Mike Patterson, a Victorian who played 167 games for Richmond before taking up the captain coach position with Norths at the beginning of the 1970 season. Having won the toss, Patterson elects to run with the win. Field umpire is Murray Ducker. The hit-out is inconclusive as players swarm in, fiercely contesting possession, and it's ball up. Mildy uses his height to give Port an opportunity, but Webb gathers to turn the attack. The Roosters tend to hurry their play, probably a legacy of grand final tension, and Port comfortably marks in defence. Spawn's spectacular leap regains the offensive for North. Passing to the forward pocket, the Roosters' thrust is broken down by Erie's keen anticipation, and Port has another chance to battle out of trouble. Sachs' sharply angled shot is just wide, but adds a point. There's some scrambling passages of play as Port strive to settle down. Rebecca bursts through negative defense and sends a precision pass to Franco. Marking safely, Franco is fully positioned to kick North's second goal. It's only a one-pointer. Capitalizing on Port's faulty teamwork, Norths maintain a positive approach. Flashing into the open spaces, Rebeck takes them further ahead. Howard sends Norths forward again, but Broadbridge jots their attack, and combining with Kale, momentarily turns their rivals back. Port's teamwork is stilted, and though harassed by Darrell Kale, Stringer passes to Burns. Port holds them at bay, and umpire Ducker orders ball up again. Port's Ruckman are being well matched, and the Magpies' professional play is below its normal standard. Norths continue pouring on pressure, but tend towards inaccuracy in front of goal. Nevertheless, they're dominating the opening quarter. Gary medal winner Ebert is constructive, but Port lacks cohesion, and North's are proving a superior attacking force. Webb easily beats Kale to Mark within goal-kicking range. And Webb 
Reds right on target. Ball handling by both teams is uncertain, but North's sharper pace gives them an edge, and Rebecca's right footer on the turn brings up their fourth goal. At the end of the first quarter, North's lead four goals, six behind, 30 points, to Port's lone point. There's reason for concern in Port's camp, especially as far as the Rucks are concerned. They've been contained in this department by Robron, Patterson and Spawn, who've kept the Magpies' chances down to an almost absolute minimum. There are no replacements in either side for the second quarter. Dashing through, Mildy endeavours to snare possession for Port, but Robron is paid a free. Sidestepping away from would-be tacklers, his purposeful boot puts Norths in a strong attacking position. Harry spoils Collins, but still Port's handling is suspect, and Norths exploit the opposite errors. But Robron is everywhere and celebrating his 24th birthday with one of the finest games of his career. His well-directed pass is marked by Phillips. Port could be in danger again, but a perfectly executed leap by LOA brings down a fingertip mark. A miscalculation by Light, and Norths go forward to again storm Port's goal. The Roosters are awarded a free from an acutely angled position. the face of the goal for a point. Harry is doing his utmost to get Port into top gear. But the Magpies find difficulty penetrating beyond the centre circle. Territorially, it's all Norths. It's a tough encounter, marked by heavy body contact. Sex punches the ball towards goal. Rebecca dashes in to finish off a polished movement. Blood streaming from a badly lacerated lip, Freeman's rugged defensive methods fail to check the flow of North's game. Obviously, Freeman needs attention, but he has no intention of leaving the field to seek it. Ports are turned back by Jaworski just outside the goal square. Intent on remaining in North's half, Ports are displaying more of their characteristic tenacity. But the Roosters match them in every phase of the game, and Patterson beats Cunningham to mark. The unrelenting pressure from Norths frequently endangers the Magpies' goal and at times completely undermines whatever button they try to establish, both in defence and attack. Freeman remains calm, but that gashed lip looks to be getting worse. Ball clears. Ports are keeping within range of North's goal for longer periods than was the case in the first quarter, but still a major pointer eludes them.
half-time, the Roosters hold a commanding lead of six goals, 11, 47 points, to Port's three behinds. This score is Port's smallest to this point in a grand final since 1909, when the Magpies of that year kicked only two behinds. But they went on to defeat Norwood in a match in which only one goal was scored. Freeman is taken to hospital to have more than 20 stitches inserted in his lip. He's replaced by Bruce Nyland. Light is to go to full forward, Nyland to the wing, Broadbridge to centre, while Ebert's at centre half forward has not sustained their forceful tactics in the third quarter. But Sorrell jolts their attack. Kale looms up on the flank, but North's defensive pattern remains firm, and they have the capacity to quickly work into goal-scoring positions. are tightening their game all round, and Kale sparks Port into an enterprising movement. Backing up, they warded as Sorrell lands their first goal. Underlying tensions are ignited as close to the cathedral end, Anderson and Light engage in a spot of wrestling. From all over the arena, players converge. Sorrell and Paul shaping up like a modern David and Goliath. Jaworski comes to Paul's aid, and though there's plenty of activity, no physical harm results by the time players are quietened and move back to their respective positions. Sorrell's goal provides Port with added incentive, but Webb takes North into a seemingly unassailable lead. Port are rushing their game, contrasting to the more disciplined control of the Roosters. defensive mark by Elloway saves a certain goal. Elloway's clearance is keenly judged and Cunningham takes a good mark, giving the Magpies an opportunity to go forward. Erie is beaten by the bounce and the untiring Robron is there to pounce on the ball. Elloway's coolness saves Port from some menacing situations. North's Hammond is giving a 100% effort. So too is Cunningham for Port. Sorrell salvages possession and passes for it, but his hurried snap is intercepted. With North swarming all round the goal square, Port can only add a point, and it just doesn't seem to be their day. But persevering, they get a chance through Sorrell. Fourth second goal, but they'll need plenty more, and in fast time too, if they're to seriously threaten North's winning prospects. They're constantly being foiled by North's pace and tackling, which turns a possible full pointer to a behind. Flashes in to add another goal for North. That could be the one to seal Port's fate. Collins adds yet another. Three-quarter time, North's nine goals, 18.72 points. Lead Port, two goals for 16 points. Coach Foss Williams hopes to inspire Port to meet the seemingly impossible challenge. North's were similarly situated in the semi, yet came through to win. Williams wants a reversal of that pattern.
Mike Patterson cards against complacency, appreciating Port's renowned qualities when the going's at its toughest. He wants a reproduction of the play that took the Roosters to the minor premiership. Though their morale must be low, Port are expected to lift themselves to the maximum in this last quarter, in traditional Magpie style. Hampered by a thigh injury, Ede is unable to match strides with Hammond, and a goal-scoring possibility is lost, adding to the mental anguish being experienced by Foss Williams. Broadbridge retrieves the situation to pass to Cunningham, who neatly hooks a right footer on the run. Fifty-one points the difference as the rain increases in volume. The ruggedness of the match is taking its toll. Port are trying to lift their standard, but Norths are equal to the occasion. And Sachs snaps up their tenth goal. period of exciting fluctuation, Port scores another full pointer. And here they come again. Sidestepping, Kale passes to White. He's on line with his shot as Port launch a full blooded offensive. They're scoring at the rate of a goal every two minutes. Port could still win. But how long can they keep up the pace? It's the first time Norths have felt the full measure of Port attacking capabilities. Haslam pulls down a mark, but seems to have jarred a muscle. He's able to take a shot for goal, and Port still have a chance to capture the pennant. Port are really firing now, but time is closing in. Their big efforts may have come too late. Seventh goal of the quarter, but the Magpies need at least four more, and they probably won't have enough time. Ebert's pass is intercepted by Hammond, and as seconds are vital to Port now, their chance of victory is hopeless. Recovering from the onslaught, North's counter. Hurl passing for dual McGarry medal winner Barry Robran, hailed as the Roosters' man of the match. The final siren, and North's win 10 goals, 1979 points, to Port's nine goals, 559 points. The first Victorian to coach a South Australian Premiership winning side, Patterson's historic feat is acclaimed. South Australian Premier Dunstan presents the Thomas Seymour Hill Cup to an exuberant Patterson, who takes Norths to their first Premiership since 1960. And their Roosters really have something to crow about in 1971.